Seasons greetings, everyone. It's that time of year again. It's Christmas. For last year's holiday video, I talked about what I consider the greatest Christmas movie ever. For this year's video, I thought I'd talk about what I consider the greatest Christmas episode ever, or at least one of them. It's always fun when your favorite shows celebrate the holidays, and Bob's Burgers, for me, is no exception. They've done, I believe, nine Christmas episodes don't quote me, and they're all good, but if I had to pick a favorite, my criteria would be, one, tell a good story, obviously, two, tell a quintessential Bob's Burgers story, three, do the two things every Christmas story must do, and four, just as a bonus, throw in an interesting backstory to go along with it. Now, if you're a fan of the show, then you probably know the episode I'm talking about. If somehow the combination of the thumbnail and all the hints I've dropped so far aren't enough, then I'll just tell you, it's season four, episode Episode 8, Christmas in the Car. So buckle up and let's take a closer look at how Bob's Burgers stole <gasps> one of its best episodes. The premise to Christmas in the Car is dead simple. The Belchers need a Christmas tree, and because it's literally the night before Christmas, they have to drive way out of their way to get one. After picking one up, they prepare to leave when Bob inadvertently cuts off a truck shaped like a giant candy cane, and what that leads to threatens not only the Belchers' Christmas plans, but their very lives. So, how does this simple premise lead to such a great episode? Well, for one, it's just good storytelling. For instance, every story needs a conflict, right? And the conflict is just a problem that needs to be solved. As I've said before, the best narrative problems are difficult to solve, but easy for us to understand, and they have a tendency to lead to more problems. So consider how the story kicks off. The Belchers need a tree on Christmas Eve. That's easy for us to understand, but difficult for them to fix. Now they have to drive an hour out of their way, and doing so leads to the next problem. Bob cuts off the candy cane truck. This problem seems easy to fix. He should just move. But since the Belchers are perpetually broke, Bob's driving on bald tires on an icy road and gets stuck, which then causes the next conflict. After an angry exchange between Linda and the driver, Hey, jackass! Quit honking at my family! You don't need to be a writing scholar to know this will probably come back to haunt them. If by chance you are a writing scholar, then you're probably familiar with Russian playwright Anton Chekhov, who said anything you include early in a story should come into play later, a concept now commonly referred to as Chekhov's gun. Once the Belchers are back on the road, who should they find themselves stuck behind but the candy cane truck going excessively slow? Once again, this understandable problem proves difficult to solve. When Bob tries to pass the truck, it speeds up, which leads to a near head-on collision, and just when it seems they're finally in the clear, the truck driver catches up and straight up tries to run them off the road. Note how every conflict led to a bigger conflict. This is the benefit of using cause and effect. It builds narrative momentum, which is exciting. It's like watching an avalanche. We want to see where it all goes. So yeah, this is a well-crafted story. But that alone isn't enough, because we didn't tune in just to watch a good story. We came to watch a quintessential Bob's Burgers story, which means all the characters we know and love have to shine. Fortunately, they do. I would argue the story only works because the characters get to shine. Consider the episode's protagonist, Bob Belcher, a modern-day Charlie Brown, or Rodney Dangerfield. Like Charlie, he never gets to kick the football, and like Rodney, he never gets any respect. Hey, my life. No respect. I don't get no respect at all. all the bad things that happen in this episode mainly happen to Bob, even though none of them are his fault. For instance, it's not his fault the tree died. Linda, who loves all things festive, bought the thing prior to Thanksgiving. Bob didn't even want to go out tonight. He's got a ham in the oven and was looking forward to a comfortable holiday. But when Linda and the kids make it clear that Christmas without a tree is not an option, he obliges them because he's a good husband and father, which puts us on on his side. Likewise, it's not Bob's fault for cutting off the candy cane truck. Kids, help me out. I can't see. Am I good? Yeah, you're good. Or for egging on the driver after he got stuck. Jenko Bells! Linda and the kids love Bob, but they clearly don't respect his wishes. They usually do the opposite of whatever he says and then leave him to deal with the consequences. And if all that wasn't enough, right up until the final act, Linda and the kids don't even believe Bob when he tells them what's going on. What the hell was that, Bobby? You trying to get us killed? Me? The trucker just ran us off the road, Lynn. Neither does this policeman when they stop at a diner so Jean can use the bathroom, and Linda can order a Dutch baby, which of course she only does after Bob tells her they don't have time. You almost ran our family off the road, remember? We're getting a Dutch baby for dessert. We'll get it to go. Because we know what Bob wants, to simply enjoy a quiet holiday at home, we view all these characters and events as obstacles in his way, which only puts us even more on his side. And, crucially, in order to serve as obstacles, Linda, the kids, 
Teddy, who gets stuck in Louise's Santa trap after Bob asks him to turn off the oven. Oh, whoa, slow down, Bob. Let me get a pen. You don't need I'll, a pen, on, Teddy. On, you just on. need to turn the knob to off. Turn the knob to? Go. Off. Don't have to do anything other than simply be themselves, which is exactly what we the audience want. But, even though this is a quintessential Bob's Burgers episode, that doesn't necessarily mean the story is original. Here's where it gets really interesting. I remember watching this for the first time, and right around here I thought, wait a sec, I've seen this before. Bob's Burgers, like a lot of popular shows, loves to pay homage to classic movies, and that's what they're doing here, except the source material is a bit more obscure than Star Wars. This is from a 1971 made-for-TV movie called Duel about an average Joe on a business trip who at some point on a deserted California highway gets stuck behind a tractor trailer going really slow. So he passes him and thinks that's the end of it, but then the truck passes him back and nearly runs him off the road, and once the truck is ahead, it slows down again. The guy in the car can't believe it. Just like that, he finds himself locked in a duel that he wants no part of, but can't get out of. I don't believe it. Duel is considered by many to be the greatest made-for-TV movie ever, which is understandable when you take into account that it's actually the feature film debut of none other than Steven Spielberg. Spielberg's monumental cinematic career actually began in television, directing various episodes before he got the opportunity to make Duel, which is based on an awesome short story by the great Richard Matheson that I highly recommend you read. The story is excellent. The movie, which Matheson wrote the screenplay for, is... It's good. It's not great, it drags a little in places, but all the driving sequences are spectacular. Spielberg was only 24 when he directed this, and he absolutely kills it. Spielberg and Matheson's execution aside, however, the real reason Duel works so well as a story is that it taps into the primal fear we all share that one day when you least suspect it, you're going to be confronted by someone or something that means you harm. You won't be able to talk your way out of it, or call for help, or run away. Your only option will be to fight back despite being vastly overmatched. In this regard, Duel is essentially a horror story. The truck driver is like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. He just keeps coming. All of which begs the question, how do you turn this into a heartwarming Christmas story? The answer is surprisingly simple. There's really only two things a Christmas story has to do. First, it has to take place on or around Christmas. And second, it has to be about Christmas. Now, the first box has already been checked. That's the easy one. As for the second, Here's how the writers did it. After leaving the diner, the Belchers are shocked to learn the truck has been waiting for them. This is when Linda and the kids learn Bob was right. That candy cane truck is trying to kill us! That's what I've been saying! We don't listen to you! After barely getting away, they hide in the woods and seem to be safe, but thanks to the bald tires they're on, they wind up getting stuck, and thanks to Gene, the family's cell phone is dead so they can't call for help. You've been on hold with them this whole time? And if all that wasn't bad enough, the truck then comes back and finds them. Once again, even though none of this is Bob's fault, it still falls to him to get out and confront the driver. Now, a critical aspect that makes Duel so effective is that you never learn the identity of the driver, who he is, what he looks like, or why he's doing this, which narratively was very smart. The mystery makes him more menacing. The Bob's Burgers team, however, had to do the opposite. After making the truck driver menacing up to this point, now they had to humanize him. So when we finally see him, he's not exactly the devil incarnate. Oh. You look like that. Instead, he's short, frustrated, and kind of pitiful. He takes his jacket off to look badass, but just winds up shivering. And when he tries to talk tough, he says things like, I'm about to bang your ass. Bang my ass? Yeah, bang your ass. Okay. He's also voiced by Bobcat Goldthwait, which was a great casting choice. Eventually, he opens up, and we find out the reason he's so angry is that he's working insane hours throughout the holidays and can't be with his family. After hearing this, Linda, who's always got a big heart, decides to give him the tree and the Dutch baby. Now, I'll admit the tree part here is a little clunky in practical terms, like why would this guy want a tree in his truck? But the message is still on point. Again, Christmas stories are about Christmas, and Christmas is a time for giving. Though Bob is at first incredulous about giving away what they worked so hard for, not to mention risk their lives to attain. What? No, the tree is the whole reason we- Give him the tree! He still agrees it's the right thing to do. All right. And the truck driver, whom we now view in a positive light, despite him only minutes before being a violent attempted murderer this guy's trying to kill us returns the favor by helping the belchers back on the road after punching bob in the stomach 
no respect. And so, after a long, arduous night, our hero's journey comes to an end. He returns, battered and bruised, with nothing to show for his efforts, to a home he can barely afford, and a fledgling business whose future is perpetually in doubt. Yet, surrounded by the family he'd do anything for, and the best friend who'd do anything for him, Bob knows he has a lot to be thankful for. Mom? Dad? Oh my god. And he is. And that's the true meaning of Christmas. Oh, and you're gonna have to forgive the somewhat clickbaity title. When I say Bob's Burgers stole this episode, I'm being a bit tongue-in-cheek. In the creative world, it's really only considered stealing if you try to take credit for someone else's work. That's not cool. If you do it, you'll get ostracized and maybe even sued, so don't. Instead, just be upfront about what you're doing so that everyone, or at least everyone in the know, understands that you're paying homage to something you admire. That's considered okay for some reason. Also, just because the central conflict here is an original, this is still very much a Bob's Burgers episode, and an excellent Christmas story at that from a really unlikely source, so hats off to all those involved. As I said in my other Bobber video, the show makes it seem effortless, but if you look a bit closer, there's a lot to appreciate. Uh, we got him! Uh, oh my god, Teddy! Teddy! 